know that Jesus Christ is the actual CEO. Amen. But join me in welcoming none other than Dr. Deron Hepburn. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus, y'all. How many of you glad to be in the house? Oh, both hands got to go in the air. Y'all, y'all are in trouble. Father, we thank you for today. This is the day you've made. We thank you for every person represented. Thank you that we're in the land of the living. Only three people are glad to be alive, huh? Let me try that again. Thank you for, the land, for helping us to be in the land of the living. See how it changed? We thank you that we're alive, God. We give you praise for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your favor. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. How many of you know that things could be worse? We could be in a hurricane right now. So many people in Tampa and Tennessee and North Carolina are recovering. And over, I think, over almost 150 persons died. So I, I think over almost 200, huh? But how many of you thank God that we're safe and sound in the name of Jesus? Or oh, y'all could do better than that. We're safe and sound. Y'all don't sound excited to be alive, man. You want to be glad that you came to church today? I Where's Jayla? I want Jayla to come. I, she has a powerful testimony. Jayla has a powerful testimony. I want her to come real quick. Jayla to come. But it's so good to be here. Today is Jonathan Isaacs. He leaves. The season begins today, y'all. Y'all cover him in prayer. Clap, cover him in prayer. I think they have their first game tomorrow. We want this to be a healthy season. Amen. Come on the stage with me. We want this to be a healthy season for, amen, for Jonathan, no injuries, and that, amen, all goes well. Amen. amen. You pray for someone the way you would want God to pray for you, and that the way you would want something to happen for you. Amen. But I want to share this report. It came good to see you when you see you Friday. Jayla, I want you to tell them what happened Friday. Tell them, let, let, let the young man in the back hear you so they could hear. Tell them what happened to you on Friday. Amen. Um, so Friday, I was giving my offering and... Sorry. Okay, I was giving my offering and I put a dollar on it and then I said, um, God, this is a sacrifice. And then I gave my sister a dollar and I gave my brother a dollar and then I wrote on it. Thank you, God, for always showing up for me because um, recently I had some troubles with school and I was like praying for it and I was like writing it on my offering like every week, every week I was writing. I was like, God, please cover it, God, please cover it, God, please cover it. And then we danced on Sunday. You're doing good. You're doing good. Take a breath. You're Sorry. doing good. So then we danced that Sunday and Ms. Sharika was like, like push, like give it all, like keep going, whatever, and then I told them, I said, give all you got, and then when you give all you got, give a little bit more, and so then we danced, and I felt like my spirit was, like, drained, and I was like, oh, my gosh, am I out of shape, or I'm just, like, there's something in the atmosphere or something, so I kept pushing, kept pushing, and then I remembered what I said, and I was like, okay, you gave your all, so give a little bit more, and then I found out that the thing that I needed for school got approved, so I was remembering that when I was writing my envelope. <laughs> So you, I want to make sure I understand this. So you needed something to prove for school. What you needed to prove? I, I, I won't get to the nitty gritty. My, my, my financial aid. You needed your financial aid approved for college. For college. How old are you? I'm 20. 20. And this is your first time going to college? Yes. First time. First semester? First, uh, no, not my first semester. It's like my third or fourth semester. I had some troubles with school. So then I kind of like got suspended on my financial aid. Okay. And so that's what I was believing God for. Too. Oh, you were believing God to work it out. Yes. And it God worked out when? He worked it out. So he worked it out on Friday, but I didn't know until On Friday, Friday he, wor he worked it. Friday just gone? No, 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 it was two weeks Friday. Two weeks Friday ago. Uh, and you didn't find out until when? Until Sunday night when I was opening my emails. Okay, keep going, keep going. Um, so I danced, whatever, you know, and then I read my emails that Sunday, and it was like, congratulations. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, cool, I got approved. And I was like, thank you. And I was like, really needing it approved because if I was taking classes and if I didn't get my financial aid approved, I would have had to pay out of pocket. But my mom was like, I'm behind you, whatever you do, 
you know, make the decision, da, da, da. And I talked to God, and I was like, God, I'm trusting that you're going to get it approved, so I'm just going to keep the God, classes. Listen, I love this. This is something y'all got to pay attention to. She is saying, God, I need this. Not just going to her parents, but learning how to develop a relationship with God and seek God for the answer. So I want you to hear that. Parents in here, you want to teach your children how to seek God beyond the natural. Amen? So that's good to be 20 years old and know how to go to God for the answer. Very good. So yeah, I said, God, I'm trusting that you're going to approve this, and so I'm just going to keep the classes. So I found that it got approved. Friday came, and I was remembering that. And I was like, thank you, God, for always showing up for me. Like, you didn't have to do that. So thank you. And I remembered that. Going fast. Thank Sorry. you, God, for always showing up. Talk to Plumber could hear you. I said, thank you, God, for always showing up for me. And I wrote that in the part that says, um, it's this prayer request, and it says, what you're thanking God for, something like that. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to thank God for always showing up for me. That was on Friday. That was on Friday, Friday passing. And then... Um, I gave my offering. I was the last person to give my offering. Miss LaShonda came and grabbed my offering and put it in there. And I seen Bishop pick up an offering thing and in my, an envelope. And in my heart, I was like, that's mine. And then I was like, even if you just call my name, that's really all I need. Thank you, God, for, you know, seeing me. So then he was, like, staring at it for a long time. And I was like, I yep, that's mine. I was like, yep, I can feel it in my heart. That's the mine. Why I was staring at it for a long time was because I wanted to hear what the Lord was saying to do. So if you ever see me pick an envelope, I'm trying to make sure that I'm being led by the Spirit to do what I'm about to do. So then he said, uh, Jayla, um, Jayla Core, whatever. And I was like, oh, thanks, God, for saying my name. That's what I was expecting, just a little name call. Thank you, God, for saying that you see me. And then he kept saying, Jayla, Jayla, Jayla. And he kept saying it. And then he was like, cover Jayla or something like that. And then he was like, Jayla, come up here. And I wasn't really fully confident in my outfit. So I was like, oh, dang, I got to come from the church. So I came up, and I was just like, you know, he's just going to say something nice, giving me a blessing or something like that. And I'm going to go back to my seat. And then he was like. Five people lay 20 feet at her, offer, at her feet, whatever. And I was like, and I couldn't believe it. Five, people, five do, people, you're going fast. Five people do what? Give, lay 20 feet, $20 at her feet. Right. And then I was like, oh, my God. Because, like. Remember now, she only gave a dollar. Yes. She only gave a dollar, and you, I think you had $3. I had $3. And you gave your sister a dollar, uh -huh. gave your brother a dollar, yeah. and then you put the other dollar in the envelope. Right. So you only had on you $3. Because you didn't have what you had on you. I had, I had ten dollars on me. Ten dollars, and yeah. you gave three. And I gave three. Okay, that's good. Go um, cause I knew I needed to. So that leaves yeah. what? That you had seven dollars left. Okay. And so then I was like, um, oh, so Bishop called me, but it was like funny because like five minutes before, I was like, okay, I gotta pay for this tomorrow. I kind of wanted to get Zion some Wendy's. Oh, I know Naya said she wanted to get this, and I, I had like random things in my head that I kind of wanted to get, but I didn't have the money for it. So I was just like. Ah. Yeah. I'm not going to stress about it. You know, it's whatever. So then when he said it, I was like, wow. Because I knew it wasn't like a dire need. I just was like, it was just something in the back of my head. And it was like, dang, God heard my whispers. And so it was cool because I was like, wow. And so my eyes started watering because I was like, dang, he heard me whispering. Like, I didn't even, like, cry out or pray about this or, like, you know, really, really need it. It just was something that, like, was a small desire in my heart and that he did for me. And I was like, wow, wow. And I just kept saying in my breath, wow, 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 wow. And so I just kept saying wow because I was like, wow, this is, wow. And so then he was like, Bishop was like, oh, so what did you give an offering? Why did you only give that much? And it was just cool because I literally had wrote on my envelope, thank you, God, for always showing up for me. And then this part, I don't think Bishop knows this part, but I told Mama Quinn after church that somebody came up to me after church and matched the seed that I had got. Yeah. <laughs> So I had got, um, it was, it came up to like $200 or something like that. And then somebody came up to me after church and said, this is to match what you made. And I was like, and I was like, Mama Quinn, I'm just letting you know because I want to be in decency and order and all that. And she was like, yeah, God did that. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, can you put 10% of that into my offering bag? And she was like, yeah, I got you. And so then, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> so... Oh, they believe we're making it up. See, look at those faces. They think we rehearsed this. They think we planned this, you see? You always got one. So you gave $3 in offering, and you gave that in faith unto the Lord. Always get, So the principle everybody in here wants to learn is give God something to work with. I don't want to see what you're giving, but how many of you know God sees what you're giving? 
on five years. And not just see what you're giving, he sees what you have left over. I wish I would have one piece of amen. Honey, I need you. Honey, I need your help. So she, you sowed that seed. So what was the total from the three dollars you gave? You can So the next principle, Shanda, is you cannot outgive God. Only one person. Look at somebody say you can't outgive God. Look at somebody else say you can't outgive God. You're all scared. So you gave it unto the Lord. How did you know? Like who, who teaches you that? Like. You know how people tell you, you go to church, they're trying to take your money, they're trying to rob you. Like, who teaches you to give to the Lord? Like, how did you know to do that? Um, so, Bishop literally just was speaking about understanding faith. So, Bishop, and then my mom has always told me, Jill, you have the gift of faith, you just have to actually believe it. And so, when I called her and told her about it, she was like, I told you, you have the gift of faith. Like, when you ask God for things, he does it. And so, yeah. Amen. So, how much you went home with? I went home with $440. From three dollars, <laughs> only one person got it. From three dollars, so if somebody tell you, say that ain't real. They tell you that ain't real. That's made up. Them people faking. What you tell them? Absolutely not. God always shows up for me. God always. You come on, y'all. Clap your hand and give God. You got to get a little bit more angry, though. You're so nice. Absolutely not, God. Always. I said, speak quiet. God has got to get a little tougher. All right. God is good, amen? And he's so faithful. It's good. Come on, clap your hand, God, for his faithfulness. And come on, clap your hand for God's faithfulness. I say, clap your hands for y'all clapping, y'all clapping for me, for God's faithfulness. Is he faithful? Five of y'all, is he faithful? He is more than faithful. Come here, honey. Come here, honey. Amen. We're going to bless our guests with some flowers. Amen. Right behind you. We're going to bless our guests with some flowers. Doesn't my wife look beautiful today, y'all? She looks, she, she, she's so beautiful, y'all. She came out the house today, and I said, honey, you look so good. She said, thank you. Amen. We want to bless them with some flowers, y'all. Amen. So good. Is that all right, y'all? I, even if you said no, it still will do it. Amen. Even if you had said no, it's always good to be a blessing. It's always good to be a what? Why? Go ahead, preacher, because it's more blessed to give. Listen, you are going to be so blessed today. Tell somebody, you're going to be so blessed. We're getting to the word today, but guess say why? That's five. Everybody didn't say, say why are you going to be blessed? Because today we have food special catered today. We have food special catered. <laughs> Clap your hand for special catered food. Okay, whoever ain't clapping ain't eating. So we ain't got to worry about you. Who ain't clapping ain't eating? <laughs> Honey, come tell them the menu. What's on the menu today? What's on the menu? What's on the menu? Tell her she don't even know what's on the menu. She sent me the menu. There's other stuff added. Shonda, do you know what's on the menu today? Amen. Come tell us what's on the menu today. That we this is special catered, meaning a chef cooked this food today. Freight from the islands of the Bahamas, y'all. Clap your hands, y'all. A chef cooked this food. She has her own catering. Come. Is she here? Is the caterer in the room? Okay. This is my niece, y'all. Isn't she beautiful too, y'all? This is my niece. Clap your hands on my niece. Growing so beautiful. Free, single, and disengage. Free, single, and disengage. Yes, sir. Uh, just got a finance degree, y'all, with almost a 4.0 average. Have almost a 4.0 average. And now going to get her doctorate. A uh, 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 doctorate. Hey, good morning, everyone. So as I tell you guys this menu, I need excitement or I'm going to stop. <laughs> excitement. Not just for the menu because you all eating for free, okay? <laughs> Woo! That's right, <laughs> to God be the glory. So we have peas and rice, y'all. Now, some people don't eat peas, so we have white rice for the people who don't like that extra uh in your rice, okay? We got white rice for y'all boring folks. 
We have Bahamian macaroni and cheese. I saved all my calories today for this meal, y'all. <laughs> we have Bahamian potato salad. We Anybody who watching their carbs, we have a garden salad just for y'all. We have crack conch, which is fried conch. We have snapper fingers. We have barbecue ribs. We have jerk ribs. We have chicken. I love y'all energy, but y'all have to keep it during service too. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell y'all anything else. You gotta come back there to see. To God be. Yes, chicken, fish, conch. Yes, for free. For free. Oh, y'all clap your hand and give God a praise. Y'all ain't sound excited, man. Y'all ain't with China, we ain't feeding nobody that's not clapping. Levon ain't eating today. Listen, God has blessed us. I've had the privilege, y'all, to go to Egypt, Cairo, Egypt, several times. And when I went to Cairo, Egypt, I've made some relationships. Andrew came to us as a result of my trip to Egypt. Andrew is a blessing. Andrew just got his green card. Y'all clap your hands for him. Just got his green card. Anybody that's not from America, you know that's a big deal. And he, I, we, I went to Egypt. We went to Assemblies of Goddess, a very large organization of churches around the world. Somebody say around the world. I guess one of the, the largest denominations, I think, in the, in the world, one of the largest denominations in the world, fast growing. And I grew up, my background is Assemblies of God. And this gentleman who is behind us, let's stand on our feet, y'all. He came all the way from Egypt. All the way from Cairo, Egypt. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't making this his first time in jump, first time here. All my leaders should be making some noise. The visitors, I understand. Come here, Pastor Elliot. Take that to Stacy's sister in the back. Stacy's sister, she came again. Take that to her in the back and bless her. But he came all the way from Cairo, Egypt, and he is... He flew in. Last year, he was supposed to speak for us, and he was unable to make it. But he came today, and he, 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 he a year later. Somebody say, a year later. So I think he's been dreaming about Jump Ministries, streaming. And listen, he is excited to be here. All I think he texted me before he came from Egypt. So he's excited to be here. You know, when you have people that are coming, they come because it's a problem. When you're excited to come, it's so much more grateful to have them. And we're excited to have him. Amen? So clap your hands one more time, y'all. This is pastor. This is my first time hearing him preach. So I'm excited just like you. Now, how many of you know you want to treat guests well? Only if my wife said that. Let me tell you why. Because you don't know when you're going to go to Egypt. So right now, we're having a friendship with Egypt, y'all. We're having a connection with Egypt, y'all. So Pastor Magid Khalil. Magid Khalil. He was, he's the pastor and the superintendent of a district in Cairo, Egypt. The executive community for the Assemblies of God churches in Egypt. Egypt. So I want us to clap our hands and welcome him to our front today in Jump Ministries Global Church from Cairo, Egypt. Put your hands together for Pastor Khalil. Thank you. Yeah, it is not my first time in this church, but first time I just to know the pastor and the uh, fish of uh, Habrun. We, we say in, uh, in Egypt, Habrun. You, can you say ha? Habrun. Yeah. Uh, let's read Luke 9. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 25 through to uh, verse 51. Uh, Luke 9. Luke 9, verse 51 through 56. 
it, uh, you will look this as the PowerPoint. You can open the PowerPoint. Hey, this is my family first. My wife, whose name is Salwa. Uh, Salwa, it means, uh, you know, uh, we have a bird coming from heaven. When God wants to feed his people, he sends Salwa. The, it's called the Salwa. Yeah, Salwa. And my uh, uh, first daughter, she's name is Liberty, and Brian and Lovina. Liberty, Brian, Lovina, they have American name, <laughs> but live in America, they live in Egypt. <laughs> we love Egypt, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, going through the uh, message, the Luke 9. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, just to stand to read the Bible. How can I move it to... Uh, Mouse is not working. Yeah. My mouse is not working. Yeah. You give me my mouse, not working. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Follow the scripture, and it came to pass. When the time was come that he should be received up, he stayed fast, set his face to go to the Jerusalem, and sent messengers before him, before his face, and they went and entered into a village of Samaritan to make ready for him, and they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciple, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of a spirit you are. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy man's lives, but to save them. And they went to another batch. You may be sitting. Amen. Father, we are here just because we are here in your presence, not in Egyptian presence, man. Lord, we submit ourselves for you, all of us. We need your anointing, your power, and we know that it's your time to speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What, what is the story we are reading? I know we are reading this story many times. The story tells us about Jesus himself wants to go to Jerusalem. Where he come from, he come from, from his town, he's from Galil. And when you came from Galil, if you see the uh, Holy Land before, we call in Egypt Holy Land because we avoid to say Israel. <laughs> but we love Israel, we love Palestine, we love all the nations. And in the Holy Land, if you want to go from Galil to Jerusalem, you have to take a shortcut Passing through, through Samaritan. If you know the gore of you well, Samaritan now, its name has a name, Nablus. If you see the map now, the name is Nablus. So he coming from Galil to Jerusalem, passing through Samaritan. But because he is Jewish and Samaritan don't deal with Jewish, he rejects him to passing through. First of all, he wants to take a permission to passing through because he's a leader. So the disciple, James and John, go to the leaders and say, our leader, Jesus, want passing through your village. They said, no. And uh, it makes James and John very angry. 
and the spirit of anger starts to move in them, and in, in the name of religion, they will consume them like Elijah do, did. And they ask Jesus, do you want uh, order fire to consume them as Elijah do? <laughs> in, uh, in the name of religion, people can do everything. Even they killed Jesus in the name of religion because he made himself equal to God. So because he made, self, made himself equal to God, they killed him in the name of religion. And in the name of religion, sometimes we have a state of manner, a state of mind in the name of religion. I, some, some people in Egypt may, may be here, they didn't take a communion because they have some fault in his life and he has a spirit of guilt. He has a spirit of guilt, just a spirit of guilt. He didn't take a communion. Yani, better than to have this spirit of guilt, confess in your fa face and God will give you to repent and God, God forgive you. But in the name of religion, people be far from God because the religion. <laughs> it's a disaster because religion. Even we know in Adam, in the first, in the beginning, God have a relation with Adam and Eve. He didn't set a religion with Moses. He didn't set a religion. The, the first time, say, Jush, it's in the Azra, in the Ezra season, when he put 10% from every a nation and put them as a 50,000 people in Jerusalem and, and called them Jush. It's the first time saying Jush. Musa passed away, passed away, and he didn't tell his people, you are now a religion called Jush. Even Jesus himself, after he done, he didn't say, now you are Christian and it is religion. It's completely now. The first time people called the Christian, Christian is in Tachias, is in Tachias. Jesus is in the heaven and people, Jesus is not Orthodox, is not Catholic, is not Evangelical Church, is not AG Church. Even he's not Christian. <laughs> Jesus is not Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lady in the airport yesterday, she told me, are you pastor? I said, yes, you are pastor. Yeah. Hey, are you Christian? There is no pastor, not Christian. Like, yeah, there is many pastor, not Christian. Really, even, you know, even with the, the Satanism, the people worship Satan, they have pastors. <laughs> they, they have sermon, they have worship, they have cross. They have everything. So I, I won't say God do, never invite us for religion. The problem with the Bible, they won't set religion with the Samaritan. Is that our father worship God in this mountain. What is your father? The, the woman in Samaria. It is just the worship the idols, they didn't never, they never worship God. And now, when we can worship, God is spirit. Anywhere you can worship. And my, my word is under this title, is this topic. Which spirit do you belong to? Uh, the spirit which I belong to, the spirit of God. But sometimes we have a state of mind. I'm not talking about to abuse with the spirit or abuse with bad spirit. I, I didn't talk about this. You know, if you didn't get my English, I, am, I have Egyptian English. Do you get my English until now? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I get my master in, in English language. Yani, so I get, yani, I can read, I can do everything in English, but also I preach in English. Now. So... My, the contain is the source of spirit. If we, if we say spirit, there is many sources of spirit. I'm not, I'm not talking about it possessed in spirit. I'm talking about a state of mind, just a state of mind. Coming from what? Source of spirit, a state of mind. Second, the negative spirit. Third, 
serve, survive in power spirit of God. Second, we can, we can say, okay, this is just many titles for the same. Okay, what happened? Yes, yes. I start to understand <laughs> how, it, how it's work. This is a source, the source of the spirit, state of mind. What is the source of spirit? When the Timothy, the Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 say, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given unto us, Say, say what is me? God has not given us spirit of fear, but he has given unto us spirit of love, spirit of power, spirit of sound mind. So if we, did, if we say God didn't has give us, even there is a sources. Some sources like what? Sources like what? Sources like John chapter 3, Verse 6, when Jesus said that, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So, flesh give flesh. Father and mother give flesh to the son. But God himself give the spirit. The source of the spirit is God. But sometimes the source of the spirit, of the spirit is like from from myself, from, my, from the setting, from circumstances. Even when, when uh, the Bible said in uh, Ashaya, uh, Isaiah, chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3, when he, when he say, Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah 61, verse 3. To appointed unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty far ashes, the oil of joy far mourning, the garment of priest, priest for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called tree of righteousness, the plant of the Lord, that he may it be glorified. So, the source of the Spirit. There is many source of the Spirit. The source of the Spirit. When Timothy says that, God has not given us even, it, 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 call, it let me know that the Spirit have many sources. So, have many sources. Maybe... The source is from the state mind from what? Negative spirit. Maybe negative spirit. Maybe su survive in power of spirit. So this is the source of the spirit. It's big different to be sad and have the spirit of, sad of sadness. It's easy to be sad. And all of us passing through the sadness of many situations to lose someone I love. But the problem is not the situation. The problem is the spirit which I take from the situation. You know? That's what I speak about. Yeah, if I success to let you understand this, yeah, I already success. <laughs> so my, my problem is never what the event, never what the circumstances. Circumstances get, come and go, and if I take the spirit from these circumstances, Satan himself success to make me sad, to make me fail. Even when, when he said about God has not given us the spirit of fear, 
The spirit of fear, it doesn't mean that I will never fear. But I'll fear, but I have never the spirit of fear. I'll fail, but I didn't have the spirit of fail. What make me continue in fail? The spirit of fail. You know, the negative spirit, it's like, it's, 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 it, not, it, it is not just about what happened. It's about what I take from what happened. You know, even when we see, when we see a two disciples argue, argue with themselves, argue together. They, it happened with Paul and Barnabas. Barnaba. Paul and Barnabas have something with them. It's exactly, the Bible called it sharp disagreement. You know, sharp disagreement about John Mark. Do you understand? Do you, do you remember this situation? I take him this trip. No, I can't take them. I, I'll take him them. I no, don't take them. So they go to everywhere. Yani one go to the, this is trip and the other take another man to take the step, this, the trip. And this sharp disagreement never make a division, make a division with Paul or Barnabas. You know, the, the situation is just a situation. We disagree, we disagree, but we never in division. You understand? So, so many, many things happen in our life. Let the thing happen in your life and never take from this happen the spirit of this happen. So, so what happened with, with, uh, with, with John and James? They take the spirit of anger from the rejection. They reject us. We want to kill them. And the problem is this spirit will take you the opposite of your calling. It's like we are calling it to save people. And now we will destroy people. This is spirit take us to the opposite. God invite me, God called me to be success. This is spirit made me fail. God called me to be blessing. This is where it called me to be curse to the people. And God tell Abraham himself, I'll bless the people who bless you. And the people will curse you, I'll. Let me do that. Never do that. You are a blessing for people. And if anyone doesn't bless you, let me treat with them. Don't do anything. You are just a blessing. Never, never let the hatredness yani, to deal in your life. So the negative spirit, anything to die, you know, if, if you say anything, to, if, if you want anything to die, what, do you know what you must do? Uh, the spirit, if you want anything to die, just take the spirit off. You know, if, if I say, Andrew is living. Andrew is living. They have have a soul, you know, have a spirit, yeah, and have flesh, you know, uh, have a spirit. A spirit has a mind. Mind has a mind, and what what he thought, what he loved, and he didn't love, what he was well, what he's well to do in his spirit, uh, in his. In his soul, but the spirit is coming from God. When God wants the man die, he takes the spirit off. You know, the cat die, the fish die, the everything is die. Has has no spirit to live. You know, the man who die has spirit who live. The fell is die because he has no spirit to live. Hallelujah. Even. The, anything in my life, the fail is die because there is no spirit to live. Anything you wanted to, you wanted to kill, take the spirit off. You know, Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, he uh, he create the lamp. You know, the, create the, the the electricity. Thomas Edison. Yeah, Thomas Edison create the electricity lamp. He try. 
many thousands, hundreds and hundreds, yani tens and ten thousand, ten, I think ten thousand. Ten thousand? Do you know the number? <laughs> when 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 they are going to celebrate to was Thomas Edison because he uh, he creates this uh, creation creator. He is a creator, and a man told him, "Don't tell the people that you are a failure for many time." He said, "I'm not a failure. I'm not a failure anymore. If I am a failure, I never be in the puppet and share with you. I just try many failure trying." The try is the fail tr belong to my try, not belong to me. Hallelujah. So let the fail belong to your try, not belong to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not happy with clap, use clap because I preach well, but because you understand my English. <laughs> 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 I just arrived yesterday 24 hours 24 hours it's like like a homeless 20, 24 hours without shower without anything and the air condition make me make me hard yeah make me fellow <laughs> so you understand about the story of thomas edison he he's trying his fail but he never fail you know i work among youth lit, little youth they have many many things in their life i told them in the discipleship group please if you fail if you fail you have two choice you have two choice to let yourself as just a between the hand of Satan to tell you about you are a failure, you are a failure, you are a failure, and go to the God Himself to cover yourself with His God, with His blood, you know, and with His blood He will set you free and living in the free of God, you know? So the negative spirit, it's like, like something coming from Satan. It's really, but something coming from myself, some, something coming from my circumstances, some come from my failure, come from the Bible. D David himself sitting to see what happened in the land and he, she, she, Gilead, he's a tall man. And the, the people in the, in the court, they, they, say, they, they listen many times. He, he speech 40 days, day and night, morning and evening. It, it means 80? 80 preaching, 80 message. I'll kill you. I kill your children. I take your, uh, your, your wives. I take your land. Just one man come to kill me, come to fight with me. No man. 40 days in silence. And Dave come. David come. He's, he's just hear from God. The spirit of power. The spirit of sound mind. He, he clean. He clean. He has a spirit. He, his, his, his brother, his brother has many souls. Why you are here? You are jealous. Why you are as a sheeper? You are just a sheeper. You are just, and said it is, and he said, okay, okay. It is just a word. It is just a word. What do you say? It is just a word. And he said, yeah, the, the voice of God is loudly than your voice. The spirit of God is loudly that your spirit. So from which spirit you are, they take the spirit from the tall, the tall man and the spirit of fear come to the people, to the, to the, to the, the, the David's, this David's brother. All of them, it's fear, but David not, you know, because he has a voice loud than, louder. 
Let the voice of God be more loud than the voice of circumstances. I, I ask you a question. Is the circumstance is real or not real? Real. Real. We are in problem. Real. It's our are in problem. We are in problem. But we have the order from God. We have the voice from God for these circumstances. So the two disciples has the voice from the circumstances, not from God. Jesus himself has the voice from the spirit. I am coming to save regardless of the circumstances. I am coming to blessing, not to kill. But sometimes we take even Jonah. You, you remember Jonah? Jonah, he has a hitterness to the people, and he has a spirit of anger. And God asked ask him, you have right to be anger? He said, yes, I have a right to be anger. You know? So, I, I'm sorry, he is fail. You didn't hear about the mission trap to Jonah again. He didn't go again. The, this spirit killed his ministry, yeah. ki kill, killed his calling, because he let... The, this voice be loud than the voice of God. I send you to be blessing. Regardless, they killed you. They take your people. Yani, it's, a, it's not your story. It's, it's my story. The negative spirit. Sometimes we have a good situation. The problem is sometimes we have a good situation. But with a good situation... We have a bad spirit, you know. In in Egypt, when we started to laugh and something happened to uh, to make ourselves laugh, we say, we say, wow, what will happen when we start to laugh and start be happy? Say that we the next day we will be sad. <laughs> it's <laughs> so. Uh, so. Sometimes we have a good situation with a negative spirit. Good job, but. I don't know will it will uh, continue or not. <laughs> yani, yani, if money come to you, he said, I don't know if it is enough or not. <laughs> yeah, I, before I came, I am a diabetes. Before I came, I go to the, uh, to make a, a, A1C analysis. It's excellent. I take insulin, take my, 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 my diets, Everything is okay. I go my, I take my training, walking, let my car beside and walking, and they, everything is good. I have a good news. I have a good news. But some people saying, really, I have a good news, but I didn't know about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be more disaster. Now it is 6.2. Tomorrow will be seven, after tomorrow will be eight, after tomorrow will be nine, after tomorrow I will die. <laughs> Negative spirit. You have, a good, you have a good news, but let your good news have a good news, you know? <laughs> Some, yeah, when, when, they, when God told me, I'll take your mom to heaven, I have a good news about this. When people say a bad news, your mom is die. I said, my mom in heaven. I have a good news about this bad news. Hallelujah. And some people have a bad news about the good news, you know? And some people, some people have a negative spirit. I didn't, I'm not saying about any, they have demon possessed. They didn't have, they didn't demon possessed. Even some preachers, some preachers, some speakers, but in Egypt, yeah. We have economic, bad economic in Egypt. Yani, if you can go to America, America economic will be better. And we didn't know what about tomorrow. Yeah, it's uh, going from bad to bad, from bad to worst, and we didn't know. What do you say? What do you say? So, my, my, my state of mind is not negative spirit no. Ash. so so in in uh, yeah that it, ha it happened many times with people negative spirit may yeah is. 
what, what I can do with negative spirit? God didn't say anything spirit is, is anything bad about them. They didn't say anything bad about them. Lacken, but they repoke, repoke, refuse, and connect your life with God's power. What, what I can say is that the solution is, let me cancel this. Ah. Yes. These steps is very important. He he turned to them and rebuke. You know, rebuke, rebuke. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you. I rebuke the spirit of hell. I rebuke. When I rebuke, even second, I refuse. I hit. I stop. I stop. I stop to be have an enemy. I. St I stop to convert my friend to be my enemy. I stop. I stop this. So, rebuke, refuse. Third is connect your life with God's power. What does it mean, connect yourself with God's power? Connect yourself with God's power, it's like, I went to the doctor uh, since 10 years ago. And the doctor for diabetes. How many, how many people in, in this hall has diabetes? No. <laughs> diabetes, uh, high pressure, blood pressure, cholesterol, many things. I, I'm not a young man. I am almost, I am 60 years old. Touch wood. <laughs> it's not for jealous or something. It's just when the, when the English people, many of you late Egypt, they said, touch the cross, the, the, the wood of cross, to have a blessing, <laughs> to stop the curse. They take off the cross and just to keep the wood, touch wood, <laughs> touch wood. But the, the, uh, the source of this verse, is this uh, tense, is touch the wood of cross to give you blessing. So... I'm 60 now. When I was 50, I went to the doctor in Alexandria in Egypt. And he bought me in the she's long and he started to, and he, to uh, yeah, he, he put something in my leg and say, oh. he said, hey, do you feel? Yes, I'm not animal. I feel. I feel. Yeah. It's hurt you? Yes, it's hurt me. So, but the diabetes people didn't feel in their feet. Why? Yeah, something will happen uh, with the diabetes people. You will lose the uh, sensitivity in your feet, and uh, you will lose something in your eye, and you will never drive your someday, and you will, you will, you will, you will. It will happen with your kidney, with your heart, with... Say thank you. And I start sitting and my wife in front of me, he starts to wear my shoes. And I told my wife in his ear, never come again to this doctor. He said, what did you say, pastor? I said, I told my wife we will never come here again. He said, why? I told him, because I have a sick without the spirit of sickness. So, some people have the spirit of sickness, but they didn't have a sick. <laughs> they have expectation. <laughs> my, my mom died with cancer, and one day I have cancer. <laughs> My aunts die like my mom with cancer. Why I'll never get cancer? Surely I'll get cancer. So I am sitting waiting the cancer. 
And if I say in my body something, and when I take a shower, hey, yeah, to go to my husband or to my wife, you know, I get cancer. Where is it? <laughs> it's just a tumor. Ah, oh, this tumor cancer. And go to the doctor. Doctor, I have a tumor cancer. Who tells you that tumor cancer? Do you go to analysis it? No, but my mom and my aunt and my grandmom and my grand great grandmom dying with cancer. Yeah, you know, let, let you take this information. We didn't die with cancer. The cancer will never have authority to let you die. In, in, my, in my ministry, I see many people had cancer and they didn't die. And I see many youths just sleeping and never wake up again without any disease. They didn't, they didn't have any disease. So we die when our age is ending. Who is controlling this? Is, is anyone else? Even, even the death himself has no authority to kill you, you know? Is it right? Even, even, nor death or anything else or disease take you or killed you. But God himself order everything and he control everything. If he has a willing for you to live, you will live. So I told the doctor, do you know, doctor, I have a, a diabetes, but this diabetes is dying because I take off the spirit of diabetes. I just have a diabetes. It is like, <laughs> it, is, it is like a dead body, like eh? Dead body, dead body. I have, I, I have a disease. The disease is like a dead body. There is no spirit in it at all. Even my disease, my sickness, my, my death himself, even has no the spirit of death to kill me. I'll die when God ordered to me to die. And he told me, do you read? the psychic boxes, <laughs> psychology boxes. I said, no, the people writing psychology boxes take my ceremony from the YouTube and write it. <laughs> if you want some, if you want some, listen, my pastor, he was in California. He is in Charabaya Church in Egypt. When he get something in his body, he went to America to have many medicines there. So the doctor told him, you will leave. And he started to call the college. He was the academic for the college. And he called me. He told me uh, what I can do in the college and many branches and do everything in the college. It's like he is going to the journey, not going to death. <laughs> he has death, but he has no the spirit of death. Even the death is like a death body, dead body. Even the death himself. Because, do you know why? Because the God converts the sickness to be healed, to, to heal you, to, to healness. God will heal you. To convert the death to new life, you will have a new life in heaven. So, even in death, you have the good news about this bad news. You didn't have the spirit of this. So, he has... My pastor has has circumstances to death, but he didn't have the spirit of death. Never, never. He go to heaven quietly, smiley. <laughs> it's like he's just going to journey, a nice journey with a pot, because he is living with Jesus. Uh, if, you, if you still have ability to hear, I can share something else, you know? Yeah, if you can. You can. If, if you read Mark chapter 5, to just apply, apply this about this woman, the spirit of death, the spirit of sickness, the spirit of fail, and the spirit of God. 
The difference between to survive in power, survive in power, the spirit of God, survive in power, the spirit of God. What will happen? What happened with this woman? In Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 5, what happened? This woman. You know the bleeding woman. You understand the story? The, the, she's bloody. She's blood. How, how many years she spent? 12 years. And she decided, according to what writing here, it is not just a touch. She come, if I just touch his garment, is a touch his clothes, I'll be healed. She, she say, she, 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 she confess his fair face. The Bible said she hear. And she said, and she decided, and she come, and she touch, and she healed. Hallelujah. Do you remember this woman? And we, we will apply our thoughts about this woman. What happened with her? What happened? It's a, something happened. It's not just a touch. Because I was in India. You know India? Yeah. I get the visa to visit India because my face. <laughs> in 10 minutes, the, the lady gave me the visa in 10 minutes. And she asked me, is your mom is Indian? I said, no. Is your grandmom is Indian? No. Is your great grandmom is Indian? No. Is your great grandmom, great great grand? No. Is your dad is Indian? No, 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 no. I'll help you to get the visa. Then I started out about my dad. <laughs> so I tell, why it looks like India? God create me so for a purpose. You, what is the purpose? Maybe to witnesses for the Indian people in your country. He you said, you know, uh, you know, I, I am a teacher in Bible school and teaching the religions. Yeah. I am a professor in religions. So I visited there for religions. He, he told me, if you try to witness for, um, for the Hinduism, they will kill you. And I'm afraid about you. Now, regardless of Hinduism, my target is Islam, not Hinduism. <laughs> he said, okay, be happy with them. <laughs> but avoid to be. But I, I told her, but if anyone asks me about my face, I share my face. I share my face. I share my face with, with any people because God loves all the people. Not because we are better than. Because God never, never, never set a religion. God set a relation. From the beginning in Genesis, he starts his relationship with Adam and Eve. And he will end in Revelation. This is the life with people. Not, not with the, the sentence, with the holy people. Just people. The people. This is the... That what God will stay with people, just normal people like you and me. Hallelujah! Normal people. It is. It is His heart. What is? What is the purpose for the Bible? Many people say the purpose of the Bible is God. The purpose of the Bible is man. No, the purpose of the Bible is the relationship between God and man. He starts and he ends with the relationship with man. The people, he will never find one to care of them. Jesus himself, God himself, he care of them. And one day God told me to do that. Go to the people who never find people to care of them. So Jesus for a people who never, for people never come, never Find the people to care. So, if you if you if you sh if you see this woman, they have she she heard, she said, she came, she did, she believed, she healed. Hallelujah. She didn't say maybe I will made well. She trust hundred percent, saying if just I touch. In India, 
is there is something like a taboo. Taboo. It's a triple, 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 oh, trap taboo. It's a boo. Taboo, it's like if you, if you touch the idol, it's touch the garment of something like, even in the Christian, we have some taboo, <laughs> you know? If that touch is a garment of me, of, 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 and I try to avoid this speech. <laughs> but, you know, it is not just a contact with God. She, she made a contact with him. She had a link with sickness, with doctors. So she grew worse. But we have a contact with Jesus. She takes the power of Jesus. So I learned something from this verse. The, the thing which you contact with him, the power will come to you. If you contact with sickness, the power of sickness will be in you. If you contact with death, if you contact with seeing, the power of seeing will go through to you and manipulate it. And if you contact daily with God, the power of God will be in your life. Hallelujah. Which, which spirit, which spirit I contact with? Which spirit I contact with? There is a great joyful in my life, you know? Even I was in funeral, I, I, have, I had a funeral for my mom. My, my eye is tears. I have a tears in my eye and I have a smile in my face. I have both. Why? Because I have a good news for this bad news. Why? Because I contact with the Spirit of God and He gave me the good news and He gave me the true, the true. The truth about the spirit, not the truth about the body. But body is temporary. It's it's just 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 a tent. You have a tent. You have a tent. Why why you are why you are why you are care about this tent more than your spirit? You know, God is interested to care about your spirit more than your body. Your body is temporary, but your spirit is eternally. So, what is the wise from God to be interesting, to be care about your body, 60 years, 80 years, 100 years, and your spirit go to hell? So, he trained you through your body for circumstances, bad circumstances, good circumstances, for your eternal life. So, this is his wise. God is wise for you. If you come to the church and to try to find the solution for your circumstances, it's good, it's not bad. If you knock the door, he will open. If, if you ask, he will give you, you know? But, but what is more important, your eternal life or your temporary life? If you try to make something for your temporary life, you destroy your life. But start to contact with God. The, the thing you contact with, you will gain the spirit of it. You, if you contact with money, the money come and go. Easy come, easy go. Hardly come, hardly go. It's money. If you contact with money, if you contact with circumstances, if you if you contact with anger, if you contact with bad people, if you contact with sadness, if you contact with sin, you will take the power of it. So this lady make a contact, not just a taboo to touch his garment. He make a contact. And after she made this contact, what happened? God turned and to, to find who do that. And his disciples say, many people crowded you and asking who touched my clothes. And, they, and he must ask, Peter, my disciple, you are, you have answer. For a question I never ask. I am not asking who is on purposely do that. I am asking who is do that purposely. Not on purposely, purposely. You know, many of you come to the church, but purposely, Who's, who is the man, the woman who changed the purposely contact God? 
this preaching for all, for all of us. But who is open his ear? God called us to hear. But who is open his heart? Yeah, and some people saying, hey, yeah, the pastor Habron uh, invite Egyptian men. He have a broken English. And they, uh, it's bored. It's bored to me. And I start to slippy. And ask the man beside me. He's still preaching. Yeah. Wake, wake me up after he's finished. Yeah, I, I am closing to finish. Wake up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Habibi. Let, let me close but this woman. And they answer the question. He didn't ask. He didn't ask this question. But the question is not who is by accident, by mistake, touch me. But who is do it purposely with intent that is open a link with my power by faith? So it is it happen result. The blood is stop. The power of Jesus Himself moving from Jesus to her. Hallelujah. If you make this contact, you know, I made this contact since I know God in 1982. 1982, it's since 42 years ago. Every day, more than ministry, I have a quiet time. I have a quiet time with God. My pastor to told me that. Your power coming from your quiet time. Not from reading the Bible and reading the boxes or try to, to teach or learn how to teach from your quiet time. From your quiet time, it's your power. Touch Jesus in your quiet time. He will encourage you. He will warning you. He will teach you. He will empower you. He will give you something to do this day. He will order you. Hallelujah. Every day you have the, the voice of God, the contact with God. If you have the contact of God, you have the spirit of God. What happens for, for this woman? The, the blood is stopped. But once, what happened once? He, she starts to fear because God asked, who do that? She starts to fear for religious re reason. You know, religious reason, she's bloody. And the bloody woman is unclean. According to what? The law. And she started, I'm, I'm unclean. What will happen to me if I, oh. And he said, ah, how great your face. Because, because. You treat me as a different, not as a religious. If you treat me as a religious, I said, what did you do? You do? Ah, yeah, yeah. In Egypt, let me say, in Egypt, if a woman has circumstance, monthly circumstance, as, uh, as you know, I'm shy to say that. <laughs> I'm not shy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you, if you are a bear with, don't take a communion in Egypt. I said, why, why you order the, the woman in this situation to never take a communion? Even the lady herself, she didn't go to the puppet or take a communion. She touched Jesus himself. It's opposite. It's opposite to the teaching of the Bible. It's not evangelical teaching or orthodox teaching. It's the teaching of the Bible. You understand? <laughs> so the hinder is religious. The problem is we can kill them by the name of religious. <laughs> we can be far from God by the name of religious. Please, please let the religious out. Be in relationship with God. So this woman, what happened with her? The blood is stopped. Let me say the eventual of faith, the eventual of faith. If you contact with God, you have the spirit of God. The sickness will stop. 
I didn't say the sickness itself, the spirit of sickness. Maybe you will be have the same sickness, but you didn't have the spirit of sickness. You have never have the spirit of fail. Fail, but let your fail, it touch you how to success. But the spirit of God never give us the spirit of fail. Of fail. So, and you have to know, not all whom throwing him, but only who contact with them by face. Not all the world which he come for, but only those whom accepted him by face. Not all who knocked on their doors, but only who open his door by face. Not all whom saying, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, by only those doing this well, his willing. Not all whom around him, but only who connected with him by face continually. Do that not just once in your face. Do that daily. Let his power control you and go from you through the other. Hallelujah. And let your, your God's power in contact with you because Satan has a power. Sickness has a power. Death has a power. Situations has a power. The, the voice of people has a power. The voice of your brother has a power. But God's power is great all great of all these powers you know if you receive if you receive this power what will happen everything in your life will stop every every bleeding in your life will stop two guys belong to Jesus James and John they change by the Holy Spirit they became have the spirit of love not the spirit of enemy and john himself became the messengers of love you know because the spirit of god changed him he contacted himself with situation he became anger he contacted him with the himself with the spirit of love he became a man of love you know god never has love god is love the being of god is love you know, and if you contact with him, God is didn't has holy. God is holy. You will contact with the holy one, with the man is with the Lord is has love. God is love, not has love. God is holy, not has holy. God is good, not has goodness. So if you contact with the source, you will have from him. If you contact with world, you will have the spirit of world. And we will never take the world, take the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God. Let us stand together to pray. Receive. Receive his power. Receive his power. Receive his power. Nothing hinder us to receive his power. Nothing can hinder us to receive his power. Father, I put myself between your hand. Do you remember one day you gave your life to Jesus as a Savior? Since this day, this day what's happened in your life? Are you grow? Are you still growing in your relationship with Him? With the relationship with your with the body of Christ? With your friends in church, your father, your brothers and sisters in church, with the pastor, is is that grew? What hinder? Maybe a spirit of anger. You angry? You are angry because some people. You are not happy because God didn't do what you want to do. Because your prayer have no answer. Why you are angry? Why? Why you are angry? Why you are not happy? Why? God has not given us spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of love, spirit of power, spirit of sound mind, 
The sound mind come to your mind, give you what you must pray for. The sound mind come to your mind saying, now what you can do. Sound mind come to you saying what you must pray for. Sound mind in your life. If you contact with another spirit, the sound mind of their spirit will come into you to saying, to order you, to manipulate you, to saying what you must do. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Repook. Repook. Repook these voices in Jesus' name. I repook you. I am not here to consume people. I am here to save people. I am not here to curse people. I am, I am here to blessing. I am the tool of blessing. I am tool of blessing. Hallelujah. If you, if you contact with the blessing man, the blessing one, you will be a blessing. If you contact with the holy one, you will be holy. God is love. God is holy. God is good. Hallelujah. God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. Let's pray with the pastor. Amen. Come on, y'all. Clap your hand and give God a praise. Come on. Come on. I say give God a praise. Faith coming by. How does faith come? And hearing comes by. By the will of the Lord. Hearing is not just listening. Hearing is understanding. Is what? If I tell my son, wash the dishes, wash the dishes, and he hears me, and I come back home, the dishes is not clean. Did he hear me? If the dishes were clean, did he understand? Amen. You can't just hear a preach word and not be able to understand the word. When he was sharing, it, what he was saying was powerful. Touch somebody, say powerful. Uh-uh, y'all don't believe. Say, touch somebody, say powerful. Now, some of y'all just saying powerful because I'm saying to say powerful, but let me show you why it was powerful. What he is talking about is, it's good faith coming by hearing. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Uh-uh, everybody. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. If the devil is whipping you behind, say amen. amen. You're not listening. You're not listening. It's key to listen. To what? So you have to hear what he was saying. What he's talking about is, and help me out now, what he was talking about was the spirit. Somebody say the spirit. What happened was when they went to Jesus, the Bible says that the disciples got angry. What they did? They got angry and a spirit came on them. What came on them? So they said to Jesus, why you have to be careful of spirits? Because if a spirit on somebody else, how many of you know it could come on you? See, this is what he was saying. So he said, when somebody is angry, Linda, if they're angry and if they have the wrong spirit, that spirit could affect you. So they say, Jesus, should we call fire down from heaven so we could destroy them? And then what Jesus said is, you don't know what kind of, oh, y'all ain't talking to me. You don't know what kind of, you don't know what spirit you are of. So people could have the wrong type of spirit and influence you because they're angry, because they're bitter, because they're frustrated. And he's saying that spirit can influence you to do or act the wrong way. So you don't want to be influenced by the wrong spirit. Hence, you got to be careful who you're around. Because if somebody got a negative spirit, how many of you know that could cause you to be negative? Because you're around the wrong person. So he's saying, when you're sick, if you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes something, if you have the, even though you may be, have the spirit of fear, you don't have to live in fear. So that means you don't have to live a lifestyle of fear because that fear will carry over into every part of your life. And I say, God, I hear this. I say, God, I hear what you're saying. What you're saying is we could live in the wrong spirit by what we say, by what we do, by being negative, by having negative people around us, having negative people speaking into our air, and we take on that person's spirit. How many of you know you could take on the spirit of a gangster? And you ain't no gangster. But because you're around gangsters, guess what you do? How many of you know you could take on the spirit of lust? Nobody in this church, that church around the corner. Why could you take on the spirit of lust? Because you're around the spirit of lust. So he's saying, don't take on the spirit. And the way we take on spirits is by what we see. 
by what we hear. Am I talking right? How many of you know we got lust all around us? Nobody in this church. So when you feed that, that's what you take on. So that's why he was saying he spends quality time with the Lord every day. God is what? Five of you. God is, oh, I left half of you. God is spirit. So whenever we around or we fellowship with God, we take on his character. Does that make sense? Which gives us the strength to resist the negative words, to live in anger. How many of you ever met a person, they always angry? How many of you, have you met a person, they always got a bad, I always have a bad day. I'm just, they take on that spirit. And so what that spirit will try to do is it will try to attach itself to you. Am I making sense? The way that you break that is you got to stay in the presence of God where there's joy. Oh, Hakeem, where there's peace, where there's love, where there, God is love. God is what? So you can't be in God's spirit or in God's presence and not adapt love. If I'm making sense, everybody clap your hand and give God praise. So Jesus said, so anybody in here that's always negative, you know why you're always negative? Because you take on the spirit of negativity. Anybody in here that's always sick is because you take on the spirit of sickness. Oh, that's so good. Come, Pastor Cocroft. If he's anywhere in the building, come, Pastor Cocroft. The reason Pastor Cocroft has, he has died, y'all. He has died. This is true. Come on the stage with me. Pastor Cocroft has thrown up blood clots. So maybe this will help somebody know. Thrown up blood clots. You're not supposed to throw up blood clots. You're supposed to, the blood clots supposed to stop in your throat and you're supposed to die. Pastor Cocroft was dead. His wife at the time had said they have to call the justice of the peace and he has to, let's call Bishop and he's pronounced him dead. He's on his way out. Yes, that's true. He's had brain surgery. Yes, that's true. Heart surgery. That's true. How many kidneys in your body? Three. How many work? None. So physically, he's supposed to be dead. That's the natural. That's what he was talking about. Because he's around spirit, which is life. Something is trumping. They don't believe me, Pastor Coco. There are doctors in the room. Go show the doctor over there your arm. Show the doctor your arm. Show the doctor. Show the doctor. So spiritually, what he was saying, he's a professor. So this morning, even though, and I know some of y'all in college, y'all got some professors that are hard to understand. But you can't leave class. God sent a professor because today I saw a different perspective. He was, I did, I'm telling you, I've been teaching for a long time. He taught me today. He, he showed me a different perspective because when I was, I was here and I said, God, I understand you were saying to them not to take on the spirit because that's, they didn't know what kind of spirit they were. I said, and that's what you're saying to us. We take on the spirit of we can fail. We take on the spirit of I'm poor, I'm black, I, I ain't gonna make it. We take on the spirit I'm from the hood. We take on the spirit of I'm a gangster, you don't know I'm a murderer. So we take on those spirits. So whenever you take on that spirit, you begin to dress like that spirit, you begin to talk like that spirit, you begin to hang on around that spirit. And before you know it, by the death he said he said remember he said he cried when his mother died but he said i didn't take the spirit of grief on he said i took the spirit on i know i will see you again she went to be with god she's in eternity so he took on the spirit of hope rather than hopelessness that was so powerful this morning does that make sense so you are let me go dice more i'm shifting you are what you eat does that make sense? You become what you think. You become what you feel. It's a spirit. And spirit live, live, live. Spirit is not dead. He said the physical die. But he said you, know what, you don't know what kind of spirit you are. So that spirit, if you, don't, if you don't operate in the right spirit, that spirit could operate in every area of your life because it's a spirit. Then your children begin to get angry. Then your, 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 the co-workers begin to get angry. Your crew become angry because you're an angry person. So that spirit is living in everything you do. Does that make sense? Somebody say, God, 
if you hear this today, it could change your life. Let me tell you why it could change your life. Because Jesus said, you don't know what kind of spirit you are. And then he said, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So what he was trying to get us to understand is you adapt. You, your lifestyle becomes the type of spirit you are. You can tell the spirit of a gangster. You can tell the spirit of a prostitute. You can tell the spirit of a robber. They carry a spirit. So sometimes you wonder, how, how, just watch a person's spirit. And then, you know, I got to be careful of that person. Does that make sense? Almost, a, I don't know, almost like you could know a tree. I love how you're listening. Knowing a tree by its fruit. Come, Stacy. And you spoke of a cancer and you didn't know this. You was even prophesying and didn't know it in your teaching. Come, Stacy. He was, that's why you got to listen. You don't know this. She was diagnosed with cancer. Come on the stage with me. Somebody help her up. She was diagnosed with cancer. Diagnosed with cancer inside of her body. She called me a few weeks ago and told me, Bishop, I'm in so much pain. I'm in so much pain. I got to go to the emergency room. So much pain. And then they didn't know what to do with the pain. They didn't know what to do with the pain. And, and then they sent you home. They sent home because they didn't know what to do with the pain. And then finally she told me a few days ago, she said, Bishop, I have surgery. So even though she was diagnosed with cancer and they took out the, the, the cancer surgery-wise, she is diagnosed with cancer and she had cancer, but she hasn't taken on the spirit of cancer. See the difference? Oh, Shakira. Oh, y'all clapping. Y'all can clap later. She, Amundi, by listen, listen to what that means. Listen to what that means, Dominic uh, 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 and Amanda kids. What that means is if she had taken on the spirit of cancer, she just had surgery. So when she had surgery, she would have said, you know what? I have cancer. I don't know what this cancer is doing to me. The day she had surgery, we had service that night and she was in church. See, she's taken on a different spirit. No, don't just say hallelujah. That sounds good, but you got to get it. If she had taken on the spirit of cancer, sister, the sisters with her and the kids, you got to hear this. That's what makes your mother live, not the surgery and sister. That's what makes her live. What causes Stacy and Pastor Kokoroff come to live is not that they don't have situations going on in their body. They haven't taken on the spirit of the situation. Because if they take on the spirit of the situation, they would be dead. Am I making sense? Or am I, I, but because Pastor Kokoroff is still in church, still coming, still at this altar, still walking the floor, still preaching, plumber, and because Stacy had the surgery to remove the cancer, how many, so give you an example. How many people you know had surgery to remove the cancer in church the same day? Now, I'm, I'm trying to show you a principle. It would have been okay. I ain't telling her to come, you in surgery, you can't get infected. But I'm trying to show you the principle that she's not living in the spirit of cancer. She's living in the stripes of Jesus Christ. I'm healed. And so is he. So even though cancer was diagnosed, even though kidney failure is diagnosed, they're not living in the spirit of failure. They're living in the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed. They take on the spirit of healing and not death. Oh, Stacy. So it's beyond powerful. So when you, when somebody tell you you're poor, you broke, or you go to the doctor's report, and the doctor say you diagnosed with this or you got that, don't take it on. It doesn't mean the doctor is lying. What he said you have, you do have, but you don't have to live in it. It don't stop you from exercising. It don't stop you from speaking the word. It don't stop you from coming to church. It don't stop you from worshiping God. Because what Satan will do is he'll start to make you feel sorry for yourself, and you begin to take that on, and that's where he has the power. If I'm making sense to anybody, take a step. Don't step because somebody else take a step. So even with your children, even when your children are failing, grandchildren, uh, uh, Lashonda, you don't take that spirit. I don't know what I can do with you. Because what happens is when you begin to take the spirit on, you begin to speak negative. You're going to be just like your daddy. You're looking like him. You're walking like him. I don't know what we can do with you. You start to speak everything because you begin to take that spirit on. It's when you adopt the spirit, you die. That was so good. Amen. That was so good. You did us a favor today. <laughs> Come here. That's what he, that was so good. And listen, even if you thought, 
even if you thought it wasn't make sense, then what would you do with Stacy? See, that's where his sermon made sense. And then even if it didn't make sense, what would you do with Cocroft? Cocroft was supposed to be dead. How many times? At least seven. At least seven. Tell them some of the things that happened to you. They don't believe you. Well, I had a brain aneurysm. I passed out like four times. I had also surgery that should have killed me. Actually, it was about to kill me. That's where I was in the hospital. And it, the, when they did the surgery, it ruptured again. And that's when they called the rapid response team and the chaplain and everything, because I was dying. My, my blood pressure was like 30 over 15, something like that. My heart rate was like six. I shouldn't even be conscious, but it was, it was six. I was dying. And I looked, at, I looked to the wall. I said, God, I'm not done yet. It, it, God, you're not done. So because he was took on, he didn't take the spirit of death. So, you know, that helps me. That helps me when I pray for people. You helped me today, Professor. Because what happens is people take on the spirit of death. And if they, you even proved to that. You know, when Jesus healed some people, he told them to take the mourners out of the room. He had to put the unbelief out of the room. So some of us, you're not successful because success is not destined for you. You're not successful because you take on the spirit of that I can't succeed. You wear it. You talk like it. So it's not that you, you talk like I, I can't win, I'll never win. You take that on. So when you try, you don't try like a winner. You try like you've already failed. That's what, hence, dressing is so key. I always tell people, it's the, you got to dress a certain way. People say, well, I got to dress. Just come as you are. You don't dress where you are. You dress where you're supposed to be going. She said to me, she said to me can I say something? And I said, absolutely, you can, because you could be helping the doctors in the room. Well, the first thing that people did when I was diagnosed with cancer is get me blankets and T-shirts that said cancer all over it. And I never wore it i never like i never entertained it i put it to the side I, i'll give it to somebody else if they want it but i refused it you know because i don't want that to be my thing i refused it because cancer i don't have cancer i'm battling cancer so that's that she didn't take that spirit on anybody understand you become, you are what you eat. You are what you take on. So you have to change the spirit you adapt. And you have the, that's emo, which is so powerful. That's why the Bible said we must be born again. So good. That's why he said we must be born again. And that's why he said that which is flesh is flesh and that's which is spirit is spirit what christ was trying to do was not saying we got to go into our mother's womb and be born again what he was trying to get us to do was adopt his spirit <laughs> he was trying to get us to adopt his spirit he was trying to say to us the spirit is who gives life not to adapt us when somebody give you things. We you gotta be careful when you tell people I'm sick and they do doctors just told me I got cancer. Be like, oh, you poor thing, my mother died too. You see how they try that you know what's trying to happen? That spirit is trying to attach itself to you. That's why you can't talk to everyone and tell everyone what you're going through. Because if you tell the wrong people, you begin to adapt who they are. Look at somebody say, change your mindset. And that don't come by positive thinking. That don't even come by positive speaking. Okay, whoever said that's true. How does it come? How it come? No, y'all in it. I just said, y'all in a different church. It don't come by positive speaking. It don't come by positive thinking. How does it come? 